Okay guys, today we're gonna do a little something different. I'm gonna take you on a tour through Northeast Pennsylvania. This probably isn't gonna be like the typical style of video. Uh, despite four days worth of, of tripping, I didn't really shoot much video, so it's mostly time lapse and lots of photos. I took thousands of photos, actually. I took about 3,000 photos during this trip. The first place on this trip would be uh, Steel Stacks in Bethlehem, PA. Also, there's a museum here, but the main interest is, of course, the giant metal marvel that is the actual steel melting foundry cooking thing these warehouses are really slick too um where they superheated the the air to help melt the steel and put it through all this really crazy giant machinery that i'm amazed that anybody could ever figure out how to operate Another interesting stop along the way was this Lockridge Furnace Museum. It's closed. It's been closed forever, it looks to be. Uh, it's just an interesting little stop. Uh, a couple of like stone ruins. Here's the museum. Uh, obviously closed. Some collapsy, furnacey bits. This rail car. It wasn't that big of a thing. It was a cool stop. It, it probably would have been better if it was actually open. Another place along the way I chose to stop at was the Nold Forest. This place was recommended to me because of all the fancy trees and stuff at it, but uh, there's an old mansion building here and the forest was relatively disappointing in my opinion. Uh, it was also super busy and most of it was closed for renovations. One of the main attractions I wanted to stop at was the Hopewell Furnace National Historic Site. This place happened to be open on the Sunday at the time I arrived. It features a, a lovely little furnace village. There's some farm buildings with the sheep and it's another like blacksmithing metalworking kind of place. Uh, it also has been fed from this French's pond. That's where we get this water from. It's beautiful earthen dam. Uh, I would stop here at French's Creek to st stop over the first night. There isn't much to do at this park. There's a big lake with boats and fishing, but that's not what I'm here for. Uh, the weather was pretty nice, rain on and off, but by the time I got to finally get to sleep, it would wake me up in the middle of the night with thunder, lightning, and pouring rain, and I had to stuff myself into the car. I'm gonna float away. After that terrific downpour of rain, I ended up sleeping in, and but the next day we were supposed to drive to Governor Dick's Park. Um, there's a geocache there, fancy Indiana Jones theme. It's in a giant cave. There's a couple of caves. The drive there was really nice. There's so much nice greenery and farmland and weird stuff going on there with stuff being sold everywhere, but it was, it was a uh, the place itself would actually be a bust. I would hike late and then there was too many caves, too much boulders, too all small for me to climb inside myself. I never actually found when I came there. Before. Next part of the journey was pretty much drive all the way to the Pottsville area. I wanted to stop and take a picture at the Walmart DC and then on to Centralia actually. Um, Centralia is raining on and off so it's like you know barely got time to really hang out or anything. Saw the windmills up here on the hill, the little bits of the leftovers of the graffiti highway from the when it was closed due to the collapses. Here's a, an active vent that isn't active from the burning mine fire. Here's some of the abandoned roads that are in Centralia with only the three or four houses that are left. It's kind of uneventfully boring here, to be honest with you. 
It's kind of an annoying leg of the journey after this because it's like another hour drive. I, I stopped at the store for a little bit to get some more drinks and ice and then headed on down to the uh, the mining village, uh, LK Mining Village. I'm going to say that wrong, of course. It was raining on and off, and I was so happy that by the time I got to the village, it was it had cleared up enough to be able to take like a two-hour walk through this place. The place is a restored mining town. There's all sorts of sheds, building, residence, stores, uh, a big coal breaker thing. The place is super picturesque and beautiful. Uh, I got there at like 5, 6 o'clock at night, so, you know, perfect hour to take these photos and pictures. I wandered around for like two hours, you know, saw a lot of stuff. You, you could take a million pictures here, I'll be honest with you. I didn't take enough. I, I probably took like a hundred. There's the coal breaker, but you can't get near it because it's all overgrown and collapsing. Uh, all these houses are mostly restored, though, so it's kind of yay and kind of yay. On my way to the place to stay at the night, I found this uh, Lehigh Tannery historic site, which they used the bark from the trees to tan the hides over here and then poison the river and killed all the trees, but this view is really good. It's pretty disgustingly rainy, but it did stop when I arrived at the park to check in, and I was really hopeful, but by the time I drove to the site, it was an absolute pouring rain. Totally disgusting, not able to put up or even put any shelter up. I stayed in the car for the Here's most part, but I decided to put the tarp along the thinking. back along the rack and cook my fish the back of my in the bed of the truck while it was pouring rain while with a literally you can see here. In the bed of my truck while it's raining, because I want to eat dinner. Next morning, got up, was super excited. The place looked super good, but I wasn't able to spend that much time. You know, we're on a timeline here, right? Here, I check out the dam that's around the corner at the pond. It's really sweet. I drive over to a couple of like little roads and bridges and stuff for in the mid area. There's a ton more to see at this park. I probably take like hundreds of pictures here, but time is uh, limited because you know, there's lots of things you gotta get going, gotta do. From here, it's actually a pretty long, long drive. Uh, it's it's drive all the way up to basically Andover. That's up near Scranton There's this really cool place that uh, is super well known about by everyone that lives up here. It's like called the Concrete City So this place was basically an, ab an abandoned train town. It was built for the train workers and then uh, At some point they uh, you know, they don't know needed it. They went to tear it down, but they're all prefabricated uh, you know poured in place buildings and they they didn't they didn't demo very well uh, They they'd used a couple dozen sticks of dynamite. They couldn't really do anything And then they kind of just they kind of just left it there. It's been there probably like 50. I don't know maybe 100 years I, I didn't do my research or I'm forgetful here. The place is really cool really interesting It's kind of up on the side of the this is where the it's a bit awkward to get to non-existent parking Pretty. The place is completely swamped out. Pretty it's got mosquitoes everywhere. It's deep in the woods. Everything is super overgrown, and it is a real mess to be out here. It's muddy, gross, bugs, everything. Uh, I walked around for maybe like less than 20 minutes here. Uh, I took a lot of photos. I wandered around a bit, and um, I, I basically just, just wanted to get out of there soon after it. It's really fun, really great place. I think I saw maybe 10 out of the 20 buildings. They're, they're all the same. They're, they're all exactly cookie cutter buildings of each other. So you, you see one, you see them all. But I probably should have spent more time, got a drone shot or something, but I don't know the uh, the pedigree of the property. So, you know, you know how it feels. Here's another annoyingly long drive from Andover all the way into Scranton. Um, the goal here was to stop at this weird park. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. There's a tree house. There's a really cool playground there, but the tree house is the main interest thing. This is a really cool wooden playground, and you never see these wooden playgrounds anymore, so this is a thumbs up for this. Decorative turtle, really cool bird, and here's the cool tree house. It, uh, it's got like a, like a 50 foot deck that goes out to it and it's like 20 maybe 30 40 feet up in the air 
It's all built really nice and artsy. It's really pretty. It's, you know, it looks like something straight out of Japan or a storybook. Unfortunately, it looks like somebody might have fallen off it at some point. His name's Boomer, and I guess he didn't survive. And you know, you can't go to Scranton without stopping at Steamtown National Historic Site. I've been here before. This place is so-so. I walked around outside, took some pictures of this giant locomotive. I think it's a modern marvel that, you know, they fit an entire steam engine system inside of a moving object that that's crazy and it was just like standard it's just as standard as going to the store and buying a motor and putting it on something now place is really cool but it doesn't really super pique my interest i've been there before you know yada 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 Anyway, we're on our merry way. My next stop is uh, Toby Hanna State Park. That's where I was going to stay for the night, you know, on the way back to Jersey. I got there pretty late. As a matter of fact, I got there too late to even get a, a site formally. And I had to use a, like a leave an envelope, kind of pay, pay with a slip type of thing. The place is really nice, super quiet, super nice. There was a bunch of people there, but at night you wouldn't even know that for anything. They, they were super quiet. It was a really nice, quiet spot. Uh, there's a lake really really nice lake I um, I cooked some food I sat down finally and, and cooked some food before the light was gone I saw these two uh, these two deer uh, wandering around a campsite they, they didn't give a F about anybody they were just chilling chilling the hell out I was biking around there this is the lovely sunset I got to see from like a you know quarter mile away and it was awesome there's an army base next next door, so uh, at 10 o'clock they played taps. That was pretty cool. It reminded me of my uh, my younger days in uh, scout camp when they played taps at the end of every night. Had an uneventful night, you know, got up actually at 7 o'clock. I wanted to get out really early, and that actually worked perfect for me. I threw everything in the car. I uh, looked around uh, the boat rental place. It looked really kind of cool with the pictures and everything, but but whatever, you know, it's a little foggy in the morning because it's really early. You know, it's, it's just, I like that it's, like, picturesque. It's really cool. Um, and uh, then I went down the street. There's, like, this giant dam on Toby Hanna Lake, and then there's these walkways doesn't make any sense there's like four bridges in the same place you know dam walking and then whatever that thing is and then a road bridge I found that interesting stopped at the Toby Hanna train station to take this picture and then we're gonna go on our way and head back to somewhere I'm on this like fake thing where I gotta go to every Walmart as a matter of fact this isn't even this is like Walmart number six on the trip this is the the Mount Pocono one it's really foggy up there really cool looking um, from here I actually got convinced to go up to Mount Pocono State Park um, it was disappointing really foggy not not a lot to see nothing to do other than the view and it made for some weird spooky pictures with the fog but other than that again you couldn't really see much there, there was an outlook but the outlook is was like the visibility was like 20 feet at best and you know you, you could see the visitor center better than you could see anything around you Even though I've been to it like two other times, I stopped at the East Strasburg Walmart and then went headed over to Delaware Bridge into New Jersey to see the Delaware Water Gap area. I've been up here before probably like three times. The KT boat launch is always really picturesque and uh, this was uh, no exception. 
I headed a bit down uh, Old Mine Road, but I found out that the majority of it's closed after the end of Worthington State Park because the Turtle Beach is closed, and I guess they don't want all the traffic down the road. I went back up, and I ended up hiking up to the Mountain Outlook, Mountain Mount Tammy. Uh, it was ridiculous. I don't know what I did. This rock was just as bad as it looks. This this is the, the view you got. You could go even further up. Someone convinced me to go way further up to the full elevation of the Outlook. So here's the here's the the trail, the Mount Tammy lookout. You can see pretty far and everything, but you know I didn't find it that interesting. Uh, it was like five miles to hike back. It, it was a pain in the ass. Uh, this guy is the person who convinced me. The person in front of me, I don't even know his name. Uh, a lot of people outside, a lot of people doing stuff, swimming, playing around in the water. It's a very hot day. Uh, afterwards, I took 80 down and stopped over at a place I've been to like six million times at Waterloo Village. I just thought it would be a good place to snap a couple of pics before the end of the day. I could have stayed at a state park over here overnight, but I didn't see the point because there's really not anything left to do anymore. I spent maybe like an hour walking through Waterloo. It's really picturesque and nice, but I'm pretty convinced that the place is like falling down. There's there's holes in some of the buildings, roofs now, and a lot of the buildings have been sitting for a long time. Some of them uh, still not not worked on six years. You know they're they're pretty pretty bad shape. This is I I noticed the new detail in the sawmill that they have a uh, they have like a a wheel power bandsaw. It's, it's pretty cool place you know, like I said you can go here and take pictures every day of the week it's 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 good but you know I've been there a long time many times so it's it's kind of like whatever Perfect. it be all right so that was a fun one for those that weren't keeping count that was nine state parks including camping at three of them three national historic sites seven Walmarts two Walmart distribution centers and I traveled 580 miles in just a, less than four days. It was quite interesting and in the same token, tiring. I seem to be noticing a bit of a trend where a lot of the places I visited even just a few years ago are closed, no longer accessible, falling apart, or <laughs> just gone. The park at the end of Deer Park Road in Alamuchi is forever closed because of lack of funding. Waterloo is falling apart. Half of Delaware Water Cap is closed. You can't go on half the trails. You can't go up to Milburn Village, Turtle Beach, uh, Buttermilk Falls, or the Copper Mines anymore. I like to do at least one more of these big giant trips before the end of the year and maybe a couple of little things, but I'm honestly. Not really sure how many more I'm going to be able to do because they take a lot of planning, a lot of time. Might not even make it to any more places before any places I plan to visit don't even exist anymore.